Good morning. Boy, you, you, you look surprised when I said that. I saw the heads just pop right up. Good morning. Welcome to worship today at Memorial Baptist Church. Do we ever have things going on? First of all, happy Mother's Day. Amen? I, I tell you what, let's, I'm, just, I'm just going out on a limb here. Okay, don't really know exactly how this is going to turn out, but if you, um, if you have a mother sometime in your life, would you please stand? <laughs> would you please stand? All right. All right. All right. Well, everybody, Mother's Day is a special day to you. You may be seated. That worked out a whole lot better than I thought it would. Well, let me tell you something. We, we, this is a day that we, of course, we always, first and foremost, worship our risen Lord in worship at Memorial Baptist Church. But today we're also wanting to honor mothers, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But, but there's a few, few things I, I need to get out of the way because we've got a lot of things going on at, at the church. One of the things that we've got going on is next Saturday we have a work day here at the church. You'll find information in your bulletin about that. If you've got any skills or if you can just lift and carry, we'd like to ask you to come and be a part of that. We've got to sign up in the foyer, encourage you to be a part of that. And also the same day, sorry that the, the days are stepping on each other, but we also want to encourage you to consider being a part of the Comfort Care Stride for Life. We have a, a table that you can sign up for over in the, the mid, midway uh, skylight area heading towards the, the, uh, the preschool area. We encourage you to participate in that as well. And also, Impact Virginia is a, a very important ministry, particularly for our student ministry, but we invo- enjoy getting a lot of other people involved in that and would like for you to take a look at some information in the bulletin as well. Now, Next week, this time next week, we will be kicking off our revival, and Jeff Neal will be coming and speaking. Folks, we want this to, to be an inreach to our church, a stirring of our, of our church, and also an outreach outside of our church. And so one thing we've done is we've printed up 5,000 of these cards. Well, listen, you may have thought we printed up too many of them, but three, over 3,000 are already out the door, and I've seen them all through town. On the inside of your pews, on the inside of your pews, we, I left two bundles, okay? If you're on the inside, would you, would you kind of grab those and, and, and wave them in the air just like you just don't care? Okay, yeah, I see some of those hands. Here's what I want you to do. It, if you're on the inside, grab it. If you already have a packet, then, then pass whatever else is left down the row. I hope that when we leave this morning, there will be none of these left in the pews this morning. We also have a few at all the entrances and strategically placed in all the Sunday school classes and exits of the church. So we ask you to just, just pass those out, leave them places uh, wherever you can get people's attention. And also, if you look inside your bulletin, we also have an insert. Pull that out. It says revival. Reach in your insert, pull that out, and raise it in the air. Okay. I see a few obedient people. Ah, yeah, more of them are, are recognizing that. On this side of it, we have revival prayer groups. We're starting those Monday night. We'll have them Tuesday night. Wednesday night, we'll meet back here at the church to pray together. And also Thursday night shows the different locations where these are at. Uh, They shouldn't last more than an hour. You come to those homes. We pray for revival. And, of course, on the other side, it tells you more about the revival. A lot of exciting things, and more than I have time to share with you, I encourage you to look inside your bulletin to see that as well. Now, you'll also notice on, on the, the um, uh, communion table, we have a number of roses. Those are not for you. This is not for this service, but we just wanted to place them there because we wanted to let, let you know that at the 11 o'clock service, we will have five child baby dedications during that service as well. So praise God for that. Let's enter to a time of prayer as we enter into this time of worship. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus Christ. We are here in the name of Jesus Christ to worship our God, our God, who walks beside us, dwells within us. If we we know his name, if we are disciples of his, he dwells within us, and he gifts us over and above even what we are aware of. Father, One of those wonderful gifts is the gift of mothers. We thank you that it was your good will 
for mothers to bless us, to nurture us, to walk alongside us through their natural life. Father, we thank you for that. And as I've said already, while we are here to worship God, we want to be grateful for mothers. Father, I ask that you anoint this worship service and it will be according to your name. Amen. Well, once again, we're excited that you're part of the worship service here. And, and, and Mother's Day is one of those days that's a little bit odd. We, have, we tend to have a topsy-turvy. A lot of people are normally in here at the 9 or here at the 11 and vice versa. We have a number of guests. If, if you are here with us the, for the first or second time, we ask that you fill out one of our guest registrations that are in all the envelope holders in the pews. And we'd also ask you to, to look around, stand, and welcome each other to worship at Memorial Baptist Church. Will you sing with me now, Wonderful Merciful Savior? Wonderful Merciful Savior, precious Redeemer and friend, who would have thought that a lamb could rescue the souls of man? Oh, you rescue the souls of man. for oh our hearts always hunger for we'll start this again here we go ready wonderful merciful savior precious redeemer and friend who would have thought that a lamb could rescue the souls of men
let's see. The slide should be, my hope is built on nothing less. <laughs> Thank God for those guys up there in the booth. Here we go. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame. Trust in Jesus' name, Christ alone, Christ alone, cornerstone, the weak made strong, the Savior's love through the storm. He is Lord, Lord of all. When darkness, when darkness seems to hide his face, I rest on him.
seated as we continue to worship through the sharing of our tithes and our offerings. This is a song, a, a mother's prayer. I'm sure a prayer very similar to what your moms have prayed for you since you were born. I pray you'll be my eyes and watch her where she goes and help her to be wise and help me to let go. As we go into this time of prayer and meditation, I uh, would like to just remind you to continue to pray for those in our church that are dealing with, with cancer's recovery, uh, Irma, uh, Donnie, and Francis. Uh, in the hospitals, uh, uh, Danny Rexroad and Hayden Brown have been able to go home. Uh, however, Katrina Perdue uh, suffered uh, as many as three strokes this week. And uh, we're expecting a full recovery, but uh, she is over at AMC right now. And, they, and the recovery will be, will be a journey, but continue to remember her and her family. As we were talking about in our 8 o'clock Sunday school class this morning, we seem to, seem to be living in a culture that is cut adrift from an anchor of truth and, and seems to be without a rudder. And I can sense the anxiety from conversations that you have with me and, and watching the media and, and just being around our culture and hearing what people will say. But folks, we believe in truth. We are a people that believe in eternal truth from a transcendent God. And as we enter into this time of prayer, let's, let's remember our nation, our community, the people that are in the intimate circles of our life, that we not only live the truth, but we point the way to the truth and stand firmly on the truth that is our Lord Jesus Christ. And of course, gratitude for our mothers, the gift of motherhood that God has, has given to us in our culture. Let's pray. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus Christ, first of all, a people of gratitude, a people that are, are overwhelmed by your grace, your grace of 
the gift of life itself. People that are invested in our lives to guide us throughout this time, different times of our lives. And Father, no one more invested than mothers. Thank you, Father. And it is, while we worship you, it is only good and right and fitting that we, that we honor mothers and praise God for the gift that you have given to us. So much good around us, so, Father, so much blessing that in times when our culture seems to be without a rudder, without an anchor, our feet are firmly planted on the rock that is Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for truth, eternal truth. And Father, as we go out from out this church and we share Christ with a world that is desperate to know him, give us the confidence as we stand on that truth and point to that truth, that truth that sets men and women free, free indeed. Father, we also lift up to you those that we are concerned about in our church, people that have lost loved ones recently, people that are still struggling with health issues. I pray as a congregation right this moment that they are sensing the grace of your presence and the prayers of your people. And now, Father, as we continue into this worship service, as we have people share from their heart, we ask in the name of Jesus Christ that you speak through them and speak to the hearer as only your Holy Spirit can. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. As I mentioned to you, motherhood is is a gift. It's a a gift, as, as, as we obviously demonstrated by everybody standing that, yes, you did have a mother. Whether she's still with us or not, you do have a mother because God chose to bring us into the world in that mother. Motherhood is a gift, a blessing to us. Perfect? No, folks, it's, it's, it's through human beings. And, and, and yes, there, there, there are, are struggles and, and difficulties and things to overcome, but what a blessing mothers are. Mothers, thank you so much. And Something that I forgot to mention from our 10 other things to announce is every woman, every woman will receive a a gift from our church as you leave the doors this morning. So do not leave here without receiving your gift from our church. Now, as I was preparing for the service this morning, as we were preparing for the service this morning as a staff, um, folks, sometimes you run out of Mother's Day sermons. And sometimes they, they kind of start running together and sounding the same. And so as I, as I prayed for that, Lord, give, give us something different and dynamic. What I sensed from the Holy Spirit is he said, okay, I'll give you something different and dynamic. I'll have somebody else speak. This morning, I'm very excited about this. Put a lot of prayer into this. This morning, we have two members of our church, as we will in the second service, two members of our church that are sharing their testimonies of honoring and remembering mother. First, we will have Byron Slagle speak, and then Debbie Walker. Byron? Good morning. I have just a quick question. Do not raise your hand. I don't want to embarrass you. How many of you remember getting in the car and taking off and your mother would turn around and she would say, you have dirt on your face. She would pull the Kleenex out of her purse, spit on it and just rub until your face was bright red. (laughs) That was my mother and I still love her for it. Uh, My mother, Josie Buller Slagle was born in a uh, dugout at Waka, Texas She's 83 years old, and she's one of 13 kids. She uh, grew up in a Christian home. Uh, They picked up cow chips as a child to uh, cook with. And 
I think that made her a stronger person. Uh, she loves the Lord. She, uh, let me find my place here. She's been married to my dad for 61 years, which I, to me, I think that's great. That shows, you know, that a Christian home is, uh, well, just makes things a whole lot better. She told me here in the past few years that if she doesn't start her day with her devotions, that she just feels like her day is lost. And I think some of us need to uh, look at that and say, you know, if it works for her, it ought to work for me. And the older I get, when I was young, I loved my mother, but the older I get, I love her even more because I see the things that she did for me that I may not have agreed with as a child, but the older I get, the more I realize that she she was doing that out of love and that she she was doing it to show us that there is a right and a wrong. So young kids, just because you think your parents are wrong, as you get older, you'll realize that they're not. As we were growing up, we went camping every summer in Colorado for seven to ten days. And it was a vacation for us, but my mother would spend a week before we left packing, making sure all the food was there. And, and the whole time that we were gone, we ate one meal in a restaurant, and that was on the way home. And it was a vacation for us, but our mother loved us enough that she got up every morning, and we had a hot breakfast when we were camping. And, you know, she made it good, she made it good for us kids. And as I look back, I wonder, you know, was it, was it a vacation for her? But she did it out of love. And she also had, as she was growing up, she had a gift for music. And I'm not bragging, well, I am going to brag on my mom. She can sit down at the piano to this day, and it doesn't make any difference what old hymn it is. She doesn't need a a book to play it, she has it memorized. Even though she can read music, she has played it so much that it just, it stuck with her. And I'm very proud of my mother for, for that. And also as we were growing up, I, I kind of was, uh, you'd go to school and the kids would have a sandwich and they had bread from the store. We had homemade bread and I was kind of embarrassed of that. But as I look back on that, I was the one that was lucky. The kids that were getting the bread out of the out of the grocery store, they were they were the ones that were getting gypped. But she also made every Saturday she made bread and cinnamon rolls for the week. And we had a neighbor that said that uh, he could smell the bread as he drove past the house. Well, he knew that Mom baked every Saturday, and he was going to stop in and get his piece of bread. And uh. He normally would take a loaf of bread home with him. And in closing, my sister, 30 years ago this month, she wrote a poem about her mom. And some things have changed in it, but it is very fitting of my mother. As I sat back to think on things, I decided my mom has hidden angel wings. A few fond memories pop into mind of all the times mama was so kind. On Sunday two loners, she would boast, I've got extra potatoes with my roast. Why don't you come home with us for dinner? Mama, you are a real winner. Now think of all the children mom knew. There was Johnny, Carl, David, and Trey, to name a few. The doors of home were always widespread for those who needed even a piece of bread. Mom always had a job on the side to help us as a family abide. She hung paper, was a cook at school, cleaned some houses, houses and made rolls that would make you drool. She is now the grandmother of six, and meals at Maple Lawn Manor she does fix. She still has time for each of us, and over the grandkids she does fuss. The day she retires to take a rest is deserved by mom who is the best. And the day I walk through the pearly gates, I hope the Lord says, you picked up your mom's good traits. 
I could continue on and on of all the nice things she has done. There is one more thing I would like to say. I love you, Mama. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you. So surprise, Mom. <laughs> um, I'm going to order the CD because I know you probably won't hear anything that I'm going to say because your mind is still in shock that I'm even standing here. Um, poor thing. She doesn't like to be the center of attention, so don't stare. <laughs> so good morning, everybody, and happy Mother's Day to all the ladies. My name is Debbie Walker and my mom is Doris Armstrong. Mark called me on Monday and he said, I've got a little project I wanna ask you about. And then he explained the services today. He said, God laid your name on my heart to ask you if you would give testimony about your mom. Would you be willing to do that? And so here I stand. So mom, in the next few minutes, I hope you will feel honored by the words I say and I promise no embarrassing stories. Everyone knows a mother and a child have a special bond. But with mom and me, there's something even more unique about our relationship. My mom became a mother on Mother's Day. Yep, I was born on Mother's Day. And today is my birthday. So today, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> So the timeliness of Mark's call to, to ask me to speak today was not coincidental. I believe it was a divine appointment. A few words from Corinthians. Love is patient and love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. And it keeps no records of wrongs. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. Love never fails. To me, this is a definition of mother, my mother. Mom's my best friend. Our relationship is more like that of sisters rather than parent and child. We're pals. Uh, we're often out gallivanting around on some crazy caper, like relocating a trespassing groundhog or maybe even riding in a helicopter. Right now, we're counting down the days to our annual girls' trip to Myrtle Beach. We just have fun and enjoy each other. She's a good sport and usually is up for almost anything. She's a generous and giving person. She's always willing to help others, and she is the most humble person I know. Twice this spring, I've come home to find my grass cut, the clippings bagged, and the bags hauled off to the landfill. She's not pretentious. What you see is what you get. Her intentions are pure. There's no hidden agenda. She is an overcomer of life's obstacles and setbacks, and through the toughest times, like when she was battling cancer some 25 years ago, I remember her carrying herself with dignity, class, and a smile, never a complaint. She's my hero. She's self-reliant and independent and has a strong sense of determination. She enjoys challenges, and when she makes up her mind to do something, it will be done one way or the other. She bought her first computer in the fifth, when she was in her 50s, and she took one class and is an is a whiz on it now. She did that because she wanted to keep her mind active in retirement. In her 60s, she took a small engine repair class. <laughs> she ended up helping some of the other students, male students. <laughs> and in her 70s, she decided to go for her lifelong dream of playing the piano. She bought a piano and took lessons. Now what you need to understand, she didn't know the first thing about music but she bought a piano and took lessons, and now she can sit down, both hands on the piano, and play for her enjoyment and relaxation. I was so proud of her. 
and envious too because I can't do that. My mama has more curiosity than a cat. She loves to learn the how about things and she can come up with more questions. She will understand. She's talented, creative, and clever. Of course she's an excellent cook and she can sew and knit and all that stuff. She has the greenest thumbs of anybody I've ever seen. Anything will grow for her. She tills her own garden, changes the oil in her mowers, and she can swing a, max, a mattock like nobody's business. She can wire an electrical outlet and do some plumbing. And she can build fences and knows how to use power tools and gadgets. And when she and her almost son-in-law, Rod, get together on a project, you just better watch out. To say she is a hard worker is an understatement. When I grow up, I want to be more like my mama. She is love and forgiveness and comfort. She's my personal motivator and a fountain of rationality and wisdom. She is my prayer warrior and my angel on earth. She is a precious and irreplaceable gift from God, and for that I say, I thank my God every time I remember you. I love you, Mom, and I treasure us. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you, Byron and, and uh, Debbie. And uh, happy birthday, Debbie. Wow. This morning, as, as we, we close out this service, as I mentioned, we are recognizing and honoring our mothers. We're worshiping our God, our, our God that has gifted us and blessed us and given us the rock to stand on that is Jesus Christ, the truth to stand on in a world that is, is upended. But folks, it's always been upended since the fall. What a wonderful God we serve. What a blessing it is to say, I am a follower of Jesus Christ. This morning, can you say that about yourself? Are you a follower of Jesus Christ? Have you said yes to God when the Holy Spirit spoke to your heart and said, let me come in to be your Savior, to be your Lord? Is this the church that God has called you to be a part of for your church home, but you've not come forward to make that official? To say before a body of believers, yes, I want to unite with Memorial Baptist Church. We encourage you to, to come forward and do that. Perhaps it's a time to come to the altar or another decision. This is your opportunity to respond to the invitation of God in your life. Please stand. We're singing hymn number 507. 507. This is that will be our invitation hymn.
Thank you for coming to worship today at Memorial Baptist Church. Now listen, folks, we're doing this again with, with different speakers at the 11 o'clock, and we're also having some special Jazzy Juniors. We worshipers will be speaking also or singing. We'll also uh, have five uh, uh, child dedications. This might be a day you want to come to two worship services today, all right? Don't forget about Sunday school. We have Sunday school for all ages. Encourage you to be a part of a Bible study class. Uh, I'll be standing right over here if you'd like to speak with a pastor. Let's pray. Father God, we come before you in the name of Jesus Christ, and we go out in the name of Jesus Christ to a world that needs to know you. Give us the divine appointments. Let us be a part of what you are choosing to do here in Stanton and throughout the, throughout the world. Thank you, Father. We go in your name. Amen. Thank you.